Can I be heard? Um, am I coming in? Good evening. Good evening, sir. I can hear you. All right. Excellent. Welcome, everyone, again, um, to this public school board meeting. Um, we do have a um, an agenda with a lot of um, interesting things to go over. So to get this meeting started, I'm going to, going to invite our our um, school board member representative of District 3, Mr. Tim Weisire, to provide an invocation. I'm going to then we would recite the Pledge of Allegiance. We have the honor of having Mr. Ricky Booth of District 5 to lead us in the pledge. Followed by, Sound right. Am I still okay here? All right. So followed by um, Ms. Terry Castillo, our District 1 representative with the mission statement, and then we move on to positive comments. So, Mr. Weisire, if you will do us the honor, please begin. Okay. Um, so we'll begin then with the Pledge of Allegiance. Mr. Booth, if you would do us the honor. Okay, if everybody would all please rise. Are we, are we ready, Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, the flag to the flag of the United States of America. America to the Republic for which, which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, sir. Ms. Perry, would you recite for us our wonderful mission statement? Yes. Osceola um, School District of Osceola's mission statement is inspiring all learners to reach their highest potential as responsible, productive citizens. Thank you. Then um, we'll go on with positive comments. Um, are you ready to give yours, Ms. Castillo? Of course. Um, I just wanted to kind of uh, note and let the community know that I just got my uh, copy of Coming to America. Uh, which is a book of stories that was created by students in Osceola County. These are uh, students who have come to our country and this is their story of, of what that means to them. Um, Mr. Manny Hernandez, a teacher at Osceola High School, gifted this to me. So I'm really excited to uh, get my hands on this and read this. And if you know Manny or any students in Osceola County, uh, go ahead and get your copy. It really helps our students. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Castillo. That is um something that I will definitely look into, add that to my reading list. Um, so just briefly, I'll go ahead, um, as District 2, I'll go ahead and give my positive comments. I, um, first of all, I hope everyone is doing well. I am, from what I hear, we, the district is um, really putting in a lot of work. A lot of folks may think, well, they don't know exactly just how busy school districts are during the summer, but that is an opportunity for a lot of things to get done in order to have a new school year take off and and keep everyone um, happy and learning. And of course, we have a, a lot of challenges. And so we're dealing with that and we're figuring out what to do. We did. We, we are going to have our summer camps. Um, I had an opportunity to present that to the step to the Spanish media. And it is going to be a summer camp with the following the CDC guidelines to the best that we can. All of them are there, uh, including some extra things that we felt were necessary um, to, to, to maintain the health and safety of our students and our staff. Definitely look forward to learning and or report to the school board from the district detailing to us how, you know, how this, how it worked out. And um, I expect some good results. I think everything that was reasonable and prudent um, is there for it to be successful. And with that, I will go ahead and, um, and pass over the comments to District 3. Again, it's great to see everyone here and I look forward to a great meeting. Uh, District, District 3 is online. Mr. Yes, Mr. Weiss, I, I would also, if, if it, is, um, it is important to all of us and I certainly do enjoy when you um, 
when you volunteer to do an invocation, if that's something that you can still provide for us at this moment? Sure, it'd be my pleasure to. Let us pray. Yeah, we come before you now. I'm always grateful that we have the honor of coming before you to lift up our concerns, um, our worries, our fears, and even our hopes and our dreams. And um, God, we come before you tonight um, asking you, as always, to provide this board with wisdom, with discernment, and with clarity. Um, that we might ultimately do what is uh, in the best interest of our students and our community at large. And God, we certainly uh, take time now to pray for um, healing across our nation. Um, so many are uh, distraught, so many are concerned, some are angry, uh, some are confused. And uh, we ask that you give us the understanding of what it is we can do to bring hope and healing and to bring unity to uh, not just those in our community, but using our collective voice for good to serve and honor you and to bring uh, all people together that we might truly be a representative body of who you are and what you reflect. Uh, God, we ask that, that love uh, would guide our thoughts and our actions and that unity would be in the spirit of everything we do. And it's in Christ's name that I pray. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Weissire. And um, I... Um, we um are, we have already heard a positive comment from Ms. Castillo and from myself, and of course we look forward to hearing yours as well. Thank you. You know the only thing I'll I'll just add because I was able to hear both yours and and Ms. Castillo's is um as I say a lot of times, but thank you for the staff. Um, Sarah did a great job with the presentation earlier, and I appreciate that. Um, and then obviously superintendent, um, thank you for your time with regard to our strategic planning workshop earlier and all the staff that was on standby to support that. And I know many of them are on this call again this evening. Um, and then, you know, maybe I'll just add one additional is to say that um, as we wind down this year, um, school year, the idea of moving into our planning during the summer months and the importance of that um, it's never lost on me, and I am looking forward to working with the capable staff in this district um, to make sure that we put the plans in place that we need to to make sure that as we consider what school next year will look like and how we navigate the difficulties of budget concerns and safety concerns um, and, of course, academic opportunities um, that we're very intentional over the next two or three months to uh, prepare in a way that will enable us to open the school up in the greatest form in the greatest fashion possible. So um, I look forward to our summer uh, because I know it's when we as a district do a lot of work to make sure that we're geared up and ready to go for our next year. And of course, we know that time goes really quick, comes upon us very fast. Uh, but I am looking forward to our next couple of months together and planning and preparing for that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Weissire. Um, next is next is our uh, district four representative, Mr. Clarence Stacker. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I don't have any comments this time. Thank you, sir. Um, and um, and the final district five representative, Mr. Ricky Booth, who always has something positive to say. <laughs> well, now you put me on the spot. I wasn't going to say anything. Um, <laughs> no, I guess, why, uh, did you talk us, why did you talk us a little bit about your, you know, your background there? A lot of interesting. What are you stuff. talking about? The, well, I have my. Uh, those are my hats from my trip. Uh, one of them is an old work hat of mine. The other is from a trip to uh, Guayaquil, Ecuador, and the other is a trip uh, that I took down to uh, Medellin, Colombia, a trade mission for the Florida Department of Agriculture. So anyway. Uh, I hope you can't see the other clutter on my desk, but it looks like uh, you have literature on, on that bookshelf. Like, is that for real? <laughs> no, I put it. I put it all there for show tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Um, hundred years of solitude, Dostoevsky. Hey, man, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> okay. Yes. Thank um, you. Let's move on. I'm. I'm gonna turn my video off. Now. <laughs> all right, Doctor Pace. No comments, sir. All right, enough fun and games. This is serious stuff. We have a school board meeting to run. And um, yeah, okay. So um, next is public comments. Dr. Pace, I believe that you're managing this. Um, I do have one appointment for the board to consider prior to public comment, sir. Yes, yes, ma'am. Please. Thank you so much, Chairman Soto and members of the board. I am super excited tonight to bring forward a recommendation for our director of risk and this 
I'm sorry, risk and benefits management position. Um, as you know, that position has been vacant for a couple of months, and yet we have just done tremendous work in getting new contracts together for our health benefits offerings. And it's been done through the work of Sarah and her team, and also the tremendous efforts of Lauren Haddix. And I am pleased tonight to bring forward a recommendation for Lauren to be our new director of risk and benefits management. She has been an online enrollment specialist and employee benefits supervisor for this department. <laughs> from 2003 to 2016, and again since 2017 to present, and also served as the Director of Benefits and Insurance Services for Seminole County Public Schools from 2016 to 2017. She received her bachelor's degree in journalism from the University of Central Florida, and our new partners with ProVenture and the, and the Rosencare Group have nothing but positive things to say about Lauren's partnership and helping to move this work forward. So for your consideration, board. So moved. Second. Motion to approve by Mr. Thacker with a second by Mr. Weisheyer. Board, do you want to make any comments or have any questions or concerns before we take this before uh, to a vote? Uh, congratulations to Ms. Haddix. Indeed, indeed. Uh, Mr. Weisheyer. Yeah, the same thing. I've had the pleasure, as you have too, uh, Calvin, and, and I, I guess Ricky and Clarence too, uh, over their time, but we've had the pleasure of working with Lauren for a long time, and um, she's truly an asset to the district. and. I know when the superintendent said that this was who she wanted to appoint, there wasn't really a concern or a question for me associated with it. Uh, she's committed to her work. She's a, a capable professional. And the fact that she understands uh, where we've been, uh, where we are, where we're going so well, I think it's going to be a really great fit for us. It's such an important area of our work. And so, Lauren, I share all those comments really just to edify you and to say I'm excited for your work in this regard. Thank you, Mr. Weisheyer, for putting that on the public record. I 100% agree. Um, she has been working with us for quite a while now. Um, so we definitely know the quality of, of leader that um, that our superintendent has just um, promoted. So with that said, I'll, I'll wait to see any other hands and I'll ask for a vote. All those in favor, please state aye. 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 Okay, and opposed say no, I hear none. The appointment, the vote passes 5 0. And I believe that's it for appointments, Ms. Um, um, Dr. Pace. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, board members. Um, moving on now to public comment. We did have one video submitted that Mr. Uh, Rubin has been able to add to our port, uh, presentation and we'll play now on the screen for three minutes. I can't, I can't hear it. I'm not getting any sound here. Ruben is um, working. Uh, Ruben is working to try to get the sound, Chairman Soto. Um, so, uh, Perhaps if you I, wanted to move on and then we can come back to that. No, may I just, I'm sorry. Let me okay. an alternative. I do believe that that video has been emailed to all the board members. I know I got it. Is anybody here who didn't get that video? Okay, so I think it's not gonna be able to play through this platform, Dr. Pace. That's why I just wanted to move through it. Um, it's just a matter of bandwidth and and how that can you know be played. Um, so, so now that you have all had a chance to listen to it, Chairman Soto, we will make sure that it's a part of the permanent record for the meeting. Thank, thank you, sir. And that would that would suffice. It's actually I do encourage everyone if they haven't and the public to um to do view it, and um I do believe it's a good message. With that said. Um, we can move forward to the next item in, in, um, in our agenda, and that is we're going to be recessing this public meeting and convening a rules, a, um, a rulemaking session, correct? Yes, sir. We'll be turning it over to Mr. Boyd. 
Okay, so Mr. Boyd, you have the floor. Good evening, school board members. We're bringing to you tonight several proposed revisions to the school board rules. First, we have two new rules, one of which you've already approved at an emergency session, but I've included it in this formal rule uh, cycle so that there's no question about transparency. And that's rule 2.221, emergency policy relating to school board meetings. This was passed at your meeting on March 26, and it establishes requirements due to the public health emergency posed by the spread of COVID-19 to hold virtual or telephonic meetings as set forth in the Florida Department of Education's additional guidance for the 2019-20 school year um, issued on March 17th, 2020, and for reasons allowed by the Governor's Executive Order number 20-69 FLDOE Directive Attorney General Opinion or Florida Law. The next proposed new school board rule is 3.14 Suicide Prevention. It implements requirements within Section 1012.583, Continuing Education and In-Service Training for Youth Suicide Awareness and Prevention, Florida Statutes. The next series of school board rule changes are actually <clears throat> revisions to existing school board rules. The following uh, list of school board rules that I will list only by their number and title all have the same change. They all update references to the obsolete law, No Child Left Behind Act, and update it to the current law, Every Student Succeeds Act, and they add the appropriate citations. And these rules affected by that change are 2.261, Family and School Partnership for Student Achievement, 5.14, Homeless Students, 5.16, Educational Stability for Children in Foster Care, 5.321, Prohibiting Bullying and Harassment, 5.1, excuse me, 5.711, Parental Access to Information, and last but not least, 6.144, Educational Paraprofessionals and Assistance. Again, the list I just read all had the same revision. The next rule, 5.70 student records, has a specific revision where it clarifies that procedures shall include provisions of the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act requirements relating to the surveying of students, the collecting of information from students for marketing purposes, and certain non-emergency medical examinations. Moving on, the last Existing school board rule with proposed revisions would be 5.80 athletics. This adds a revision to paragraph 9 to clarify that beginning June the 1st, 2021, per Florida High School Athletics Association, FHSAA rules, a school employee or volunteer with current training in cardiopulmonary resuscitation, CPR, and the use of an automatic external defibrillator, AED, must present at each athletic event during and outside of the school year. I mean, excuse me, must be present at each of those events that I just said, including practices, workouts, and conditioning sessions. And this revision uh, would also affect paragraph 10 to clarify that the AED must be in a clearly marked and publicized location for each athletic contest, practice, workout, and conditioning session, including those conducted outside the school year. The final set of proposed rule changes all affect the Code of Student Conduct. First change, of course, is always that in general, our changes are to revise policy to comply with recent changes in state law and to provide consistency with district precedent and current practice where we can. On page, uh, well, actually on the title page of the document, the year would be updated to reflect the 2020-21 school year. On page 25, there would be revisions to the definitions of stealing slash larceny slash theft to reflect less than $750 and more than $750 in accordance with state law. 
on page 25 also there would be a deletion of the definition of unsafe act excuse me unsafe act for the purpose of clarity on page 27 there would be a revision to the section standards of conduct for riding on a school bus to clarify that a school bus is school board property the code of student conduct applies on a school bus and that parents must receive permission prior to boarding a school bus and it adds transportation designee as a contact to whom concerns about student conduct on the school bus may be reported on page 27 there's also a clarification that students parents have responsibility for control direction and conduct of the student during all times other than when the bus is present at the bus stop on page 27 there's replacement language for the phrase buckle seat belt to utilize the student restraint system there's a clarification on page 27 that throwing items from a school bus is classified as a felony also there's clarification that littering throwing or propelling items is prohibited whether inside or outside a school bus on page 28 there's a clarification that profanity obscene language offensive gestures or offensive materials of any nature are prohibited whether on the school bus or at the bus stop there's also a clarification on page 28 that the use of devices associated with tobacco nicotine are prohibited on page 28 there's a clarification that students on school buses may be videotaped to ensure safety and security on page 36 there's an addition of boy scout and other patriotic youth groups to the school district's non-discrimination statement section in order to reflect current federal law and last the code of student conduct matrix is updated to reflect all the above relevant revisions as appropriate. These are the revised changes that are proposed for the board's consideration at this workshop. I'll pause at this time to answer any questions you might have or to receive any feedback that you have, and we'll bring these back to you, including the, um, of course, uh, your feedback on the 16th of June at the public hearing and then ask for final action so that we could move forward with the publication of the Code of Student Conduct for the 2020-21 school year. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Boyd. I'll just, I don't know which hand went up first. I'll start with Mr. Thacker and then will be Mr. Weissire. Um, Clarence, you have the floor. I just had a question on the uh, defibrillator devices. Does anybody know how many of these we're going to have to buy and how much these things are a piece? Because there's practices going on all over the place at the simultaneously. We looked into that. I mean, I, I'm not opposed to it, but this this it seems to me this could be really expensive. I I, I don't know how much those things are, but. Uh, Chairman Soto. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I I can't remember the exact Sorry. number. Mr. Shatera did tell me Sorry. that exact number on Monday in our leadership team meeting, hand. as well as the cost for that. We will follow up and make sure that you get that number. We have had AED dice AED devices at most of our schools. Right. The challenge is going to be that they now have to be located outside at fixed locations because at first we looked to see is it something that we could have, for example, in the athletic trainer's cart, but it must be on a stationary location. So we're going to have to add them to, for example, football concession stands. Most softball and baseball concession stands are use shared facilities and could be used. But I believe they were like going to have to be two new ones at each of the traditional high schools and perhaps three new ones at Osceola High School, if I remember. And they're about twenty five hundred dollars a piece. Thank you, Dr. Pace. Uh, Clarence, do you want to um, anything further on that on your question? No, I just um, it just concerns me sometimes. I mean, I'm all for for keeping kids and coaches and other people safe in there, but um, there's a there's a trade off on all these things. So. That's all I have. Indeed. All right, very well. Um, I believe that Mr. Weissner was hands. Mr. Weissner? Thank you, Chairman. Actually, my hand was still raised from the earlier comments, so I'm fine. Thank you. All right, 
right, thank you. Uh, Mr. Klupenbacher, you have a comment or some input? John and I were working on this. I just want to make sure that the record's clear. We are getting literally minute by minute, day by day stuff out of Tallahassee on these issues. So uh, we will be bringing back updated matters even after we go to print. We're not able to control how this information is getting out, you know, is coming to us. So I just want you to know that uh, we're tracking it very closely. John's done a great job, but uh, in fairness to John, it, it, it I think we got something a week ago and we had to sit down and work through it. So um, just know that this is a an evolving issue. Thank you, Mr. Parker. Um, Mr. Booth? Yes, Mr. Boyd, these, uh, the defibrillators, uh, as much of the policy that this is a state uh, rule, a state mandate, is that correct? Yes, sir. Uh, and which fund, Dr. Pace, uh, has the state, uh, which funds has the state released to pay for these um, at all the, our high schools and the ex added locations that we need at all the high schools? There were no additional funds allocated for that in this year's proposed budget. Mr. Shatera did clarify for me as you were talking that we need 17 devices. It's going to cost about $32,000. He was able to find some more competitive pricing. That will just have to come out of the operational budget. And so this, just to be clear, this has been mandated by the state, but they have not uh, sent any funds to Osceola County uh, to pay for the 32, you said, or $32,000, 17 different. Um, right, 17 additional well. devices. And again, we already had made a significant investment in, in the devices. Understand as well that there's an annual cost to make sure that batteries are, are current and charged and they have to be inspected. Um, but this is an ongoing issue to keep people safe, and we're certainly committed to doing that. In addition, there's the requirement of the bulb, th bulb thermometers and also the ice tubs, but we fortunately were already well supplied with tools and equipment that we could use to meet those additional requirements for safety from FHSAA. Thank you. All right, thanks. Um, all right, so I don't see any anything, um, anyone else. Uh, I, I have another question. Oh, yes, Mr. Thacker, please proceed. Um, Probably for John. Um, I might have missed this when you were reading. Hmm. Is this a only a high school athletic event, or does it include our medical middle school stuff as well? I will get some clarification for the next meeting. My understanding is that it's at any athletic event of that kind, so Which it could be... possibly include middle school. But I'm not certain. I want to get a a direct answer for you, and I will follow up tomorrow um, in an email. Thank you. Yeah, because it sounded to me like it's any event, which would be middle school and possibly even some elementary stuff. Is the way I understood it. I will get that clarification for you. Yeah, that's all I have. Thank you. All right. So, um, I don't see any other um, requests for comments or questions or concerns, Mr. Boyd. Um, is, is there an, an action that we must take to adopt these rules today? Not today, sir. We'll bring them back to you on the 16th for the public hearing and for public comment opportunity. And uh, at that time, we would ask for action so that we could move forward with publication of the Code of Student Conduct. At that time, we'll bring the additional changes that um, the state board rule that was just passed a week ago that Mr. Kruppenbacher referred to. Um, we'll bring those changes at the same time. Very well done, Mr. Boy. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And um, folks, that will conclude our rulemaking um, meeting, and we will now um, just um, get back to our regular school board meeting, reconvene, if that's the word. And that takes us to the next item in our agenda, which is um, we're going to ask for uh, agenda modifications. We're on number five. So I'll go down the list. Number one, Ms. Castillo. I do not have any agenda modifications. All right, I don't have any either. Um, number three, Mr. Weissire. 
No, sir, I'm fine, thank you. Number four, Mr. Thacker. I'm fine, thank you. And number five, Mr. Booth. No, sir. Does the superintendent or the, uh, the attorney, the board attorney, have any modifications? None, sir. None. I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. And the um, moved. I make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. Very well. We have a motion by Mr. Thacker and a second by Ms. Castillo. Um, seeing no hands for comments, we'll go ahead and take a vote. All those in favor, please state aye. 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 Uh, opposed, state no. Vote passes 5 0. And that will take us then to um, number 13, which is an information, the information section of our agenda. 13.01 investment performance review. I believe we have someone that will speak or present to us in this matter, Mr. Richard Kangali. Uh, good evening, uh, Superintendent, uh, Board. <laughs> uh, give me a second to uh, pull up your report here. <clears throat> Okay, so you should be able to see uh, a, um, a cover of the report, uh, school district quarterly market update. Got it. Okay. Yes. Okay, great, great. So, uh, you know, I'll start off by saying that uh, with everything else that's uh, going on that uh, you all have to really consider um, the uh, school district's uh, portfolio, operating funds portfolio, uh, it, you know, is kind of a bright spot in that it actually performed very well uh, despite uh, the constellation of, uh, you know, news and events that are going on and have been going on uh, since the beginning of the year. Um, the school district's portfolio had uh, its best uh, quarter uh, over the uh, first first quarter. Uh, this is uh, the period ending the uh, end of March uh, that it's had it, you know, in uh, more than 10 years. So um, the, the school district's portfolio is specifically designed, uh, the strategy in place for it uh, is specifically designed for these kinds of markets and designed to outperform uh, in these kinds of markets. So, you know, I'll start by just showing the numbers. Uh, the portfolio for the quarter had an absolute return of 2.12%. Uh, and again, as I said, that's the best quarter uh, that it's had. If you, you know, that's a quarterly number. If you think of it on an annualized basis, or if you earn that every quarter, uh, that would translate into, uh, you know, something like uh, an 8% return on an annualized basis. Um, for the actual uh, year ending March 31st, uh, the return was 4.85%. Uh, you underperform uh, the benchmark for the quarter, uh, but uh, that was driven by the fact that there was a massive flight to quality uh, during the first quarter as investors fled everything, stocks, commodities, you name it. Uh, investors basically shed everything else and sought the safety of high quality fixed income investments and in particular uh, US Treasury securities and your index is uh, made up of US government securities. So uh, nothing outperformed uh, as well as US Treasuries uh, in, uh, in the first, uh, first quarter. Um, you know, as I said, your portfolio uh, is uh, designed for safety and liquidity in mind. Those are your primary investment objectives. Uh, it's mostly made up of U.S. government securities. 85% of the portfolio is, is invested in uh, government or government-backed uh, uh, types of investments, uh, with the majority of that, 73%, invested in U.S. Treasury securities. And again, I'll reiterate that uh, when investors were selling everything else, everything else was losing money, uh, these were the securities that they were trying to, uh, to, to buy uh, in, in mass. Um, the amount that's invested in uh, the corporate sector and these other sector sectors that are non-treasury se sectors uh, detracted from performance relative to the benchmark. Uh, but again, uh, over time, uh, those all contribute to the returns of, uh, of the school district. Um, you know, we have uh, closely monitored uh, the holdings, the particular names that are held in the portfolio um, and uh, will continue to do so. Um, we have seen, if we look in the current quarter, the quarter that's going to end at the end of June 30, that uh, we've gone back to more normal relations where 
uh, things like corporate securities, uh, agency mortgage-backed securities uh, are again uh, outperforming uh, their equivalent treasury counterparts. So, uh, you know, again, great performance to the first quarter uh, when we had that uh, that shock in the market, uh, and then uh, we expect uh, you know continued good performance uh, going forward. The bad news is that. Uh, and if you can see this on your screen here, you know, the current yield on your portfolio reflecting where you bought uh, the investments and securities in there is at 2.06%. That reflects the market from 2019, 2018, et cetera. If you had to go out and buy all these investments today, uh, you'd only be getting a 0.69% yield uh, on it because interest rates are so much lower right now. So. Uh, you've locked in a lot of value, but as we continue to update uh, the portfolio, rebalance, uh, you are going to see that yield start uh, start trending down. Um, just a little bit of uh, background, uh, you know, 2019 going into uh, going into 2020, the U.S. Uh, economy was on uh, fairly uh, good footing. Uh, GDP growth was in that two two and a half percent range that we've seen uh, post credit crisis. Home sales were up. Consumer confidence was good. We were seeing uh, something like 170,000 uh, monthly, um, 170. Uh, 170,000 new jobs being added to the economy uh, on average each month. Uh, and then, of course, the pandemic hit uh, at the uh, in the middle of uh, middle of March, uh, the WHO declared a pandemic. Uh, and to counter this, uh, governments all around the world uh, effectively shut down their economies, uh, trying to uh, keep people at home to sort of break the uh, the rate of transmission. And that, of course, uh, has had major impacts uh, within the financial markets and the type of investments uh, that you hold. Um, we, you know, we have some uh, data about uh, the, you know, spread of the coronavirus. I won't really go into that since that's sort of uh, fairly reported on, um, you know, kind of looking at uh, what economists project for the trajectory of uh, economic growth. Uh, we did see the economy shrink by 5%. Uh, the numbers that you see on your screen reflect, you know, uh, projections as of 331. I'll, I'll give some updates here. Uh, so uh, GDP first quarter was 5%. Uh, projections for the current quarter in, we're in, which is where we're expected to see the brunt of uh, the brunt of the effects of the lockdowns, uh, you know, range from 40 to down 53%. Uh, so the economy uh, uh, shrinking by by almost half. Um, uh, but then that's going to be followed by, uh, you know, a, a big bounce back in the second half. Despite all this, uh, you know, if you look at various econ uh, economists forecasts, uh, even the Congressional Budget Office uh, recently came out uh, as recently as yesterday with a, an updated forecast on GDP. Uh, the economy is expected to be smaller going into 21, uh, 2021. Uh, expected to shrink from anywhere from five to seven percent. Uh, you know, if you look at the the total of 2020. Um, you know, in response to all of this, the Fed lowered uh, short-term interest rates in two emergency meetings. Uh, they basically brought short-term rates back down to zero. We had struggled over 2017, 2018 to get back up to to. 2%, uh, which, you know, really is not a big number on an absolute level, but at least it's, you know, something uh, above uh, inflation. Uh, and then in response to this, the Fed immediately uh, cut rates to zero. Um, if you look back to the credit crisis, it took them uh, probably a year and a half uh, to implement that uh, level of cutting or, or to get uh, interest rates down to zero. Um, they also took out a whole host of measures, basically the entire toolkit that they had developed, uh, you know, 10 years ago, 10 plus years ago in the credit crisis, they took those all out and implemented them almost overnight. Uh, so uh, really uh, unheard of pace of uh, implementing uh, all of these stimulus programs to support liquidity in the market, support financial markets and support the economy. Um, the same thing has been happening uh, with uh, Congress. Congress also acted very quickly to implement a series of uh, programs to support the economy in various aspects of, uh, of, of the economy, and they're working on a, another large uh, um, uh, measure as well. 
Um, so, you know, the, 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 the downside of all this is now that we're in this lower interest rate environment, uh, we're unlikely to see a quick bounce back out of it. Uh, it's likely going to be some time uh, before we see interest rates raising again. Um, you know, other uh, parts of the globe have implemented uh, measures such as negative interest rates, even where you actually pay the government to uh, to hold uh, your, your your money rather than receiving interest. Um, uh, the Fed has communicated very clearly that they don't see that happening here, but uh, we're actually seeing that uh, that talk kind of uh, creep back out uh, into into markets as well. Um, generally, you know, outside of the government sector, uh, spreads have widened, meaning that the yield benefit from investing in things that are non-U.S. Treasuries, such as federal agency securities, agency mortgage-backed securities, or corporates, uh, those yields are are. Uh, somewhat better on a relative value basis. Um, again, a lot of these markets, almost all these markets are also being backstopped now and supported uh, by the Fed in some form or fashion through uh, many of their uh, programs that they have, uh, they've, have implemented. Um, I will sort of end on uh, sort of a, a snapshot of the portfolio uh, indicating that you know, you are, of course, and, and continue to be in compliance uh, across the board with your investment policy. Um, you know, I will say again that, you know, the portion of your portfolio that's not invested in U.S. Tre treasuries, you know, we are uh, carefully monitoring, doing careful surveillance, uh, heightened surveillance on, uh, on, on all names. Uh, to make sure that uh, they're all, uh, you know, appropriate for, for the school district. Uh, and at this time, you know, we, uh, you know, have, uh, have, have not uh, made any recommendations to liquidate uh, any, uh, any securities or any of your holdings. Um, so I'll stop there. Uh, any questions? So, um, board, I'm looking for hands so that I can give you the platform. All right, so we don't have any any questions or comments. Um, Mr. Pengali, I I certainly have none. Okay. Um, but um, yeah, thanks for giving us an update. I know there's a lot of things that are going on right now with the markets with just because of the circumstances that have been that um, that the country world, the whole world's going through in terms of social distancing and you know the whole um, COVID-19 pandemic. And so this was a very interesting presentation. I look forward to the next one and see what trends do emerge from all of this. Sure. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. We'll go ahead. Um, thank you, Richard. And proceed with our agenda. There's um, a 13.02, Dr. Pace. Yes, Chairman Soto and members of the board, I'm pleased to share with you tonight, as well as with our community, some of the plans that we have developed in order to provide an opportunity for our students, our graduates of the class of 2020 to have formal graduation ceremonies while they might be slightly different than they've been in the past to make sure that we're keeping both our students and our staff members safe. So Ruben's gonna help me carry through the PowerPoint. Uh, the first slide shows you the dates that we have planned, our three smaller graduations for professional and technical high school, Osceola Virtual School in Zenith, and then Osceola School for the Arts will be at our Osceola School for the Arts auditorium on July the 6th and July the 7th. I learned just today that Dr. Evans and her team at Osceola School for the Arts have been able to work with their student groups so that they will be able to have their combined performances like they always do to demonstrate their particular art form at their graduation ceremony with their friends through an electronic means. So we're super excited to see that. Then we will be transitioning to Osceola Heritage Park for a full three days of additional graduation ceremonies, starting with Point Siena, Harmony, and Osceola on Wednesday, to Hopakaliga, Liberty, and St. Cloud on Thursday, and Celebration, Gateway, and Osceola Technical College finally on Friday. So a busy, busy week, but we're super, super excited about what this is gonna mean for our graduates and their families. Just to walk through a few, some of the specifics. 
For those graduations at Osceola Heritage Park, we have worked with the team at OHP to design seating and talk about ticketing so that we can have separation of students. They won't be six feet apart, but we will be able to have them three feet between chairs and three feet between rows. It will take up most of the floor of the arena for OHP. They will be limited to four guests per graduate who will be seated every other row skipping seats. The left diagram shows you how the seating arrangement will be for the graduates, including a smaller stage, but the red carpet will go all the way down the aisle. And the diagram on the right, as you're looking at the presentation, shows the little blue dots where adults would be seated, the guests with their four tickets for each one. We will be encouraging everyone to wear masks. And I have an example here for you. We have class of 2020 masks that we've ordered for each and every one of our graduates to make sure that we can keep them safe. And I was a little concerned about the quality because we got a great price, but they're a really nice cotton weight that I think our students will be enjoy having as a memento as well of their graduation ceremony. The students will come in. They will be wanded just like they always have for a security check. We will do a temperature check. And then each student will pick up their actual graduation diploma cover so that there isn't an exchange of hands touching those graduation diploma covers. And before they enter the arena and go to their seats, they'll have their official graduation picture made um, to avoid all of that kind of stuff. Rather than the recessional from the back that would require kids to all crowd around out there in the lobby, we're going to have our students come straight in, find their seats. They're going to be numbered with letters and, and numbers so that they'll find their seat. And then we'll have a recessional or a processional at the beginning and a recessional at the end using the, the red carpet. We will have students cross the stage, uh, have their picture again with that official diploma cover. Uh, we won't be shaking hands, but we might bump elbows or at least be able to say congratulations. And we will allow the students to take off their masks for the parade across the stage when we're gonna read their name and, and cheer with their families to, to celebrate this important milestone. For the graduation at Osceola County School for the Arts, we have done similar work in terms of looking and measuring seats and deciding how we can make sure that we have our students adequately spaced. Unfortunately, um, because of the size of the auditorium, we will have to ask our adult guests. There'll be two guests per student. They'll be seated next door in the expo hall. Uh, the students will sit in the auditorium every four seat again with their diploma covers with their pictures already made parade across the stage calling their name and celebrating with their 2020 mask but for those guests at the expo hall as well as for all of the graduation ceremonies we have contracted to stream the videos live i will caution parents and students and guests now that the live streaming is limited at specific capacity so if you are sure you wanna sign in at six o'clock, but you have trouble logging in to the live stream service, we would suggest that you wait. It will be fully recorded and you can watch it live perhaps later on or the next day when there aren't so many people trying to log in at once. So we feel like this isn't um, the best for everybody, but it's the best that we can do to try to keep our kids safe. We have just a few other guidelines. Um, as I've said, we're gonna be providing this nice, lovely 2020 mask that they can wear as they're seated in the audience, as well as visiting with their friends for the recessional and processional, but they will be allowed to take it off to get their diploma covering, uh, to get their diploma picture made. Uh, between our ceremonies, we will have our school district maintenance staff able to sanitize the um, seats, both on the floor and in the other areas with the electrostatic sprayers that we have. Uh, again, we are going to take temperatures and put hand sanitizer on hands as students come in and anyone with a temperature higher than 100.4, of course, would not be permitted to participate in the graduation ceremony. And we're gonna be sure to communicate that a lot frequently during practices and all those kinds of things, because we don't want any disappointed on the day of graduation, but we also don't wanna take a chance on spreading the disease to anyone else. Finally, then again, we also will be conveying to our parents in advance and to all of our guests who are coming that we will be practicing social distancing in the arena and that anyone exposed to COVID-19 or exhibiting symptoms must not plan to attend our ceremonies in order to keep everybody safe. 
So it's not um, what everybody dreams of every year for graduation, but the class of 2020 has already demonstrated just a tremendous amount of resiliency. Uh, we continue to modify the plans as we talk with our principals, talk with our graduation coordinators to make sure that we have things in place to celebrate in the safest way possible. And we appreciate your support in making these events possible for all of our students and our staff members. And that's all I have if there are any comments or questions. Thank you, Dr. Pace, and please stand by. Um, Ms. Castillo, you have your hand. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, well, I had two questions, but the first one, Dr. Pace, I think you kind of answered, which was with regards to how we're communicating to the community uh, the guidelines, and you did say that you would be um, communicating those those guidelines to the students while they are in their practice. Is that correct? Okay. Yes, while they when they come for their graduation practices, our principals are also using remind and we will do the same thing through our typical uh, communication channels, social media, the website and remind. Perfect, thank you. And um, the second question is with regards to the uh, the streaming. So I know that we have contracted with some kind of video service. Uh, is there also an opportunity to stream via Facebook Live through our channels as well? For because I know one of the things that you mentioned was that there may be some issues with logging on and and whatnot. Would that be a a good a good alternative um, option as well for the community? Our great friends at Positively Osceola are going to be helping the Facebook Live piece for us. Perfect. Thank you. Excellent. Um, Mr. Actually, Walker. Dana just corrected me and we're going to be doing Facebook Live. So, <laughs> okay, still great. Probably, Thank you. And probably other people as well um, on their own. Mr. Weissire, you have the floor. Thank you, Chairman. I just want to say great job, Superintendent. Appreciate all your work on this. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Weissire. Um, just going to pause to see hands and then I'm going to um, say a few things. All right, so the first thing I want to to I want to start off first by um, really, I really, really appreciate Dr. Pace and her staff um, pre preparing this presentation. I asked that this be done because um, I knew that they had a lot of good work, a lot of thought put into um, making this happen. And I just wanted to make sure that it was on the public record and that it was presented to the board and to the public. And um, and and in, and and you met my expectations and the board's expectations in every way. Here's here's the the what I really want to say. So, just like anything, you know, you you have to weigh um, the risks and the benefits of of just about you know a lot of activities. We try to make we try to make a, we we have a commitment and a duty to provide a safe environment to all of our employees, our, our staff, our visitors, everyone. We know how important it is. Uh, you know, there's some functions that are just very important. And while graduations may not be, you know, graded or measured, it doesn't go in any diploma. It is a, it is a celebration, a recognition, a culmination of, of thousands of, of lifetimes. I'm talking about parents, I'm talking about students, I'm talking about teachers. Every year that we graduate a class, every time I see a principal's face at the end of a graduation, I read a story. It's just, I don't know how else to describe it. To say that this is an important event, it just doesn't really, 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 really explain why it is so important that we try to understand everything that's going on with COVID, with social distancing, with guidelines, and still, and still have this event. It's it's um. So so here's the thing. Okay, this is going to work out. It could work out great if everybody does their part. And this is so important that we reach to our students and that we reach to our community and to our parents to understand that yes, this year is going to be different. But we can make it happen. Please, please, please take the suggestion of masking and respect it. Have that courtesy and that kindness, um, regardless of how you may personally feel about it. The other thing is, is um, you know, if you have any doubts as to what to your health or 
whether you could be a carrier or or you could feel ill. Um, you know, there's a lot of a lot of children that are going to be there and, and think about them and and um, you know, there's always the live feed, and you still have the pride, you know, of seeing your loved one um, participating, graduating, and receiving that recognition um, that they so much deserve. Um, and so we're going to make this happen. The only way to have the minimal risk is to not to participate. So there is going to probably be some risk because that's realistic and that we cannot deny that in a school district that is dedicated to learning. Obviously, it's dedicated to understanding science and the truth. And that's what we are about. And so with all of those things put together, I am extremely excited about the fact that we are going to have it. The fact that we have a great plan that we really put a lot of thought into it, superintendent. Um, you know, many times I, I will always say that you and your staff have made me proud. This is one of those times I expect the community to make us all proud and for us to have a great celebration. 2020 will probably ne never be forgotten, but certainly will be keenly remembered by by everyone that's um that's going to be involved in this. Mr. Booth, you have your hands up. Yeah, Dr. Face, I just wanted to ask, do we have any kind of preliminary uh, number, uh, do, percentage, I guess, or do we feel we're going to get 90%? I mean, look, some of these kids are going to already be off, off to, you know, on a job or military or, or to work or, or school or maybe early enrollment, the summer enrollment. So what do we believe we're looking at? 90%, 80%, 70%? participation do we know i'm guessing between 90 and 95 percent we don't have those specific numbers wow. right now i know the seniors were super super excited about an opportunity to come together and right. get together the children we're going to lose are the ones who are entering the military early because even those who were doing early enrollment for the college programs are doing them virtually so we feel pretty confident that we're right. going to have those students here and and again keep in mind that we have a couple hundred seniors who are still working through the next month to complete their credits and they'll be allowed to walk and, and participate in the same graduation ceremony with their peers so we're also super super excited about that okay good that was it mr chairman thank you all right very well i'm um, going to pause for just a moment to see if anyone else wants to make um any comments has any questions um or discuss anything about what they've heard i'm talking about the superintendent's presentation and i don't see any other desire to stay on this topic, therefore we will continue on. Again, thank you, Dr. Pace. Our next item on the agenda takes us to our regular agenda, item 14.01. And so- I'll make a motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. This is Mr. Booth. Second. Okay, and we have a motion to approve by Mr. Booth and second by Mr. Thacker. On item 14.01, I'm gonna wait for hands. I know Booth hasn't taken his down yet. Um, That's right. You got me. So, mm -hmm. seeing that there's no desire for comments, questions, or concerns, <laughs> in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, please say no. I don't hear any. Vote passes 5 0 on 14.01. Takes us now to, four, to 15. I'll make a motion to approve item 15.01. All right. All right, so item 15.01 and motion to approve by Ms. Castillo. It is for the approval of the discontinuation of selected hazardous walking and courtesy riders. I will second it for discussion. Um, by the way, you can always call a discussion without a second as well. Um, I understand that from the rules, but we do have a second by Mr. Thacker. With discussion, Mr. Thacker, you do have the floor. Um, Correct. I, I understand why we're doing some of these, but uh, how, how much are we going to save by removing the, I don't know, is there six routes or seven routes, how many, or, or pickups, whatever you call it? It's a couple of them seem like no-brainers, but there's a few of those. Um, I mean, the cobblestone and Neptune, I'm, I'm amazed that's only two miles. It seems like a long way to me. <laughs> 
I, I believe that Mr. Creech is on the line and could give you specific numbers about costs, Mr. Thacker. Our goal here was again to be efficient with our bus services. Um, we know that uh, we're going to have some challenges in the coming year with our budget, particularly as it potentially relates to transportation and all of the conditions that had resulted in the hazardous walking condition classification had been corrected in terms of, a, you know, sidewalks were built, those types of things. But Arby, would you like to comment on Mr. Thacker's question? Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. And good evening, Mr. Thacker. Um, we've looked at this very, very carefully and, pro and we're estimating as many as four buses can be removed uh, or routes can be redesignated. That's a, an approximate cost of almost a quarter of a million dollars to the district. Uh, bus runs about 60 to $65,000 a year to operate. So it's a, it's a it's a pretty significant savings for the district at this point. We also took a very close look at this, the, the, uh, the conditions under which uh, the students would be walking, and we feel that they're uh, conducive to a safe walk. I, I'm not sure if everyone uh, knew it, but we also put together a safe walking video and uh, posted it on the, on the website so that parents that might have concerns can see how we actually would uh, make that walk from the uh, neighborhoods to those uh, selected schools. Okay, thank you, Arby. I appreciate it. Thanks, sir. I guess just one more comment. I, I understand what we're doing. We after we approve it tonight, we're going to go to the public or to the to the parents of these kids. It yes, seems a little there. backwards to me. I don't know if anybody else feels that way or not. I just didn't want to bring it to the public before we had a chance to make sure that the board was on board with making these changes. Arby, you want to comment? Uh, yes, yes, ma'am. Thank you again. Um, normally, we would not make these kinds of changes unless the board was very aware and we had the support of the leadership. Some of these uh, routes have been out there quite a while, and unfortunately, sometimes the parents forget that they may not be eligible for that bus ride. So letters will go out starting tomorrow uh, and Thursday uh, to, to uh, give parents a chance to get their students ready, and we'll, of course, be available to help them and provide guidance uh, or answer any questions for them. Mr. Thacker? Okay. I'm not, okay. Uh, just just um just um listening carefully to, to Mr. Thacker's um questions and concerns and the response, it seems that as though the fiscal implications, well let me just say the costs are, are quite significant. And that seems to be the main motivation motivator for the district to make this recommendation. Is that correct, Dr. Pace? Correct. We're talking about both costs and also remember that we continue to fight a bus driver shortage. Um, and, and we're slightly concerned about the percentage of blood bus drivers that will be coming back to work for us in August and what our back to school plan will look like for transportation. So that's why we felt like um, when we have uh, routes that are no longer eligible for any reimbursement from the state, keep in mind that we only get about 49 cents per the dollar that we spend on transportation um, as it stands already, that we had to try to bring as much tightness to those routes as we can. We do, of course, alter routes, add routes as, as necessary based on safety and public feedback and, and certainly board direction throughout the year. But this is our initial planning. Um, and we would certainly start actively communicating with parents uh, with board approval starting tomorrow, as Mr. Creech said. Thank you, Dr. Pace. Uh, let's pause for just a moment to see if any, any more input or questions or concerns or from the board. I don't see any hands. Um, so I'll go ahead and call the question. Um, we have a motion to approve by Ms. Castillo. Uh, second by Mr. Thacker. Uh, board, all those in favor um, of, of of this um, of um, item, I believe it's fifteen point zero one. Please state aye. 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 Okay. Uh, opposed. Please state oh. no. I didn't get I didn't get my eye in time, but it was I to approve. I couldn't get my mute button off. It, it came in. It came in right at the. Okay, but Sorry. I, um, I understand I, I, I registered only four, so I believe that Mr. Weissart's not with us. He had to leave the meeting. 
Right. So I'm going to go ahead and call it um, approved with a vote of four zero. Very well. All right. So we'll go on to item number 16, superintendent's recommendation. Approval of the contract between TNTP and the school board. Do I have a motion on this item? Do we have a motion? To approve the contract between TMP, TNTP and the school board. So moved, Mr. Chairman. So I guess a, second. <laughs> so there's a motion to approve by Mr. Mr. Booth and a second by Ms. Castillo. Um, I'm going to pause to see hands for comments, questions, or concerns, and I see none. Therefore, I'll call the question. All those in favor, please state aye. 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 I, I heard four. Vote passes 4 0. Brings us to number 17. Um, Mr. Kruppenbacher, you have the floor. Yes, thank you. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, we have had a lawsuit filed against the district. Uh, by Stix LLC and the Teal LLC company versus the School Board of Osceola County, Florida. It's a petition for writ of certiorari regarding the school board denying the developer uh, their request to be able to uh, have reduced impact fees following the next board meeting, which Tanya, what is the next regular school board meeting schedule? Uh, on June 16th, I would request that we have an uh, executive session on litigation. I don't believe it would go any more than 30 minutes to an hour. Only for the statute, I need to announce the only people in the meeting would be the board members, the superintendent, myself. There would be a court reporter who would record what is said. That would be confidential until the litigation concludes and any appeals are over with. The only topics that can be discussed during that meeting are litigation strategy and or settlement discussions. So I'm asking that Mr. Chairman, if you and the board would please schedule that. It sounds reasonable. Thank you. I have no, nothing else to report. Thank you. Um, thank you, Frank. Um, Superintendent's update, uh, Dr. Pace. I would like to request consideration for a special board meeting on June the 30th at 530. Um, we can do it electronically, but it would be to bring forward um, some ideas and have board discussion regarding our back to school and back to learning plans. Very well, um, let's go ahead and um, make that happen. Some, uh, uh, can, I, can, I, workshop? can I ask a question on that? Well, go ahead, Ms. Gustin. I, I apologize. I should have raised my hand. Um, you said school board meeting. Sure. We're only discussing one specific item. So is it a workshop? It would actually be a board meeting because I will be needing action on those plans. Um, however, it will be limited to just that item on the agenda. Well, the Got two it. items back to school, back to learning. And are, are we open to having it at the same time that we typically have our school board meeting or okay. That was going to be my recommendation that we do it at 530. I think it'll be important to make sure that we allow for public uh, involvement. Got it. I understand that we'll probably be hearing um, from our task force as well, Dr. Pace. Yes, I um, have an offer from the infectious disease specialist who's on our, our back to school task force to be a part of that meeting and discussion. So it would almost be more of a workshop, but we need to call it a meeting because I will be needing action. Very well. Um, Mr. Booth. Uh, yeah, two questions. Uh, Dr. Pace, I, I, um, you know, I, I, I want to require any documents that will be discussed um, at that meeting. Prior to that meeting, please, any, any task force recommendations. Um, and certainly, I'm, I'm assuming that you will do that. Uh, Absolutely. Our intention is to have it published a week ahead of time, just like we do our regular board meeting agendas. Yeah, yeah. Uh, number two. Um, do we know, do we have a timeline for FDOE or the governor's comments on what are they going to, I'm assuming they're not going to leave everything up to the local district. So I, I was just wondering kind of where we were at on that. I have been hearing for two weeks that we would hear something, but I again heard <laughs> this morning that we anticipate that we'll hear something from the governor and the commissioner this week. Okay, well, that leads to my next question. If we do not hear anything by June the 30th, I, I, I mean, I certainly, would that be grounds for a reschedule or, or what do we need to Absolutely, do? Absolutely, sir. If we don't have any guidance whatsoever, then we would be talking about that on June 16th to reschedule. Thank you, Dr. Bates. That's it, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Um, 
Thank you. All right. Anything further from anyone? See none. We'll move on. Oh, Dr. Pace, anything, any final words on that? We're good? No, sir, other than, you know, I understand again that everybody is anxious to, to know what we're going to be doing in August, but as I shared with you at the last board meeting and as I, and I've shared in all of my public presentations, to make a hasty decision I think would result in the wrong decision. So it's very important that we continue to work with our local experts, work with our parents who are on the task force. We're, we're getting input both through the survey and other sources and taking all of that impact into all of that input into consideration as we think about a plan. And we will certainly be bringing that to the board in plenty of time for you to talk about it and give us feedback before we bring back a recommendation. Very well, thank you. Um, unfinished business is, um, Dr. Pace, this is your item as well. Also, you know, back to school, is this what we were talking about? Yes, sir, I really didn't have another update for you tonight. Very well. Uh, new business, any new business? I'll see a hand. I know Mr. Busto hasn't put his down. No new business? All right, board member comments and committee report. So I did um, in the last school board meeting, one of the things that I wanted to make sure is that we have open communication about the topic of what the school district and how the, and the board and the community, what kind of knowledge we could share. We spoke at length about a lot of very important topics, you know, um, a lot of important issues related to this topic. Um, again, I think that, um, I, I, I really I'm confident that we're going to have a, a very good result with our graduation plans if everyone does their part. And I'm very, very happy that we are having graduations. And I don't see any other hand. So at this time, if there's anything final, waiting for hands, seeing none. Thank you all for being here. Our next school board meeting is on the 16th. And we'll learn more about everything at that time. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Be safe and have a good evening. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yep. Thank good night. Thank you. Thank you.